Alabama Tracy. Thank you. All right, we are live. Hey everyone, welcome. Hey guys. <laughs> welcome to tonight's issue uh, edition of Union Jesus. We are here every single Sunday um, at seven o'clock Central, eight o'clock Eastern time. We talk about um, our relationship uh, with God. And so tonight we have my friend Joel and Stephanie Heath. Hey y'all. Hey. <laughs> And they're going to be talking about their relationship with God. And so we also have some people here in the audience. <laughs> they're all like, they're all here to see them. <laughs> right? So we're excited about that. Uh, but if you guys are brand new to you, oh yeah, if you're watching this, please feel free to share this. If this is your first time watching us, type hashtag new. If you've been here before, you can type hashtag Jesus. If you're watching on the replay, type hashtag replay. And it lets us know you are watching this on the replay. All right, so we're here tonight. They're going to talk about um, their relationship with God, Jesus in the marketplace, and then they're also uh, Victory School of Supernatural Ministry students. And so there is a, she's the extrovert, he's the introvert, <laughs> just like me. Uh, but they are students of the end of the I'm putting them on the spot early uh, to see if they hear anything from God to share uh, with you guys, because in school we are taught how to hear the voice of God, not only for ourselves, but for other people. And so at the end of the broadcast, I will ask them and then the audience if they feel like God is saying anything um, to them about some of you guys, because many times when we're alive, we will hear God say that he wants to heal someone or he wants to encourage someone. Um, and so you just never know, it may happen. Now, we're not going to pretend like we got something. If we don't have anything, we're going to say we don't have anything because there's no point of lying um, to make ourselves look good, right? Yep. Amen. Sure. Right, right. Okay, so let's get this party started. So introduce yourself, Joel, and then you introduce yourself, and then we'll start with the group. How's it going? I'm Joel Heath. Uh, I'm number 93 with the Houston Texans. Woo, <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I don't guess I'm not doing the whole background thing. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I'm Joel. You can tell the background. Don't tell the background. Uh, I don't know any of that. No, no, Cincinnati, Ohio. I went to a small school called Mount Healthy High School. Uh, my mom and dad, they love me. And, <laughs> yeah. Are you the only child? I have one brother. He is 20. No, he's 30. He's 31 now. Okay. Oh, he's, he's 30. He's, 30. he's, he's 30. old you. I'm 20. Born on 20. Oh, so you're the youngest. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So I wait a question. So how does Michigan come into play? I went to school at Michigan State University. Oh, okay. I got it. I saw Michigan on his Facebook page. I didn't know how that kind of, okay. Yes. Yeah, it's right. it's the love of his life. Yep. <laughs> See, he didn't mention it, right? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Joe, my daddy with me, Joe. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when do we get married, Joe? After, after, after you introduce yourself, that's when y'all come Okay. Back. Yes. Okay, so I'm Stephanie. Hey. Um, I'm from Michigan. I'm from Muskegon, Michigan. You've never heard of it. No. I have four other siblings. My parents, they love me too. Um, and <laughs> that is all. That's all your background? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not you like sing? super I mean, excited. Do you sing, do you dance? What else do you do? Oh, because you said you play football? <laughs> well, um, I go to BSS in ministry school and I'm fortunate to be able to sing with the worship team a lot of weeks out of the year, which is awesome. Um, I'm in regular school. I graduated in May with a bachelor's in communication because I oh like to God. talk. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to? Southern New Hampshire University. Okay, I didn't know that. She will be flying to New Hampshire to walk across the stage. Okay. Because I paid all that money. Yeah. Y'all going to see me. <laughs> <laughs> My advice is going to meet me. Yeah. In person. And, uh, okay, that's it. That's it? Okay. That's so, how did you guys meet? I'll, I'll let her tell it and then I'll kind of pick it back. Okay, you can please. Well, we, oh, no, we want to hear two versions. And so we're going to ask Joel to give us the first version I, without I, Stephanie saying, that's wrong. That's wrong. I was saying. So just your version. How we met. All right, we met. Um, you can't jump in. Oh, it, was at, it was at a Marvin set. Well, it was really, I don't know if you guys know, but it's the PAW and like the UPC. What is that? Pen, uh, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. And then the UPC is the United Pentecostal Church, Church okay. um, International. I don't know. Um, so we we met at a convention, uh, church convention, and actually I'm really close with her brother uh, Theo mm -hmm. Theophilus. That's his name. His full yeah, name. Yeah. I'm really close with him, and I'm also close with my best friend now, who was my best friend at my wedding, Rodney, and they all grew up together. 
Yeah. So his brother, do I talk to you or am I talking to him? It doesn't matter. All right. So um, his brother, his brother told me, her brother told me one day that um, you should meet my, meet my sister. She's, she's awesome. She's, you guys will vibe really well. Both kind of fun, loving, goofy people. And I was just getting out of a relationship and wow. I had been in that, I had actually been prior engaged. Oh. I met her in, I met her in high school. Um, and we kind of went through our whole college fling thing and it was long distance and it didn't yeah. work out. Okay, got it. So it didn't work out and the Lord kind of told me I needed you to focus on focus on, on football and focus on me, make me a priority first. Oh, wow. So I spent the whole year doing that and I had committed that and I wouldn't I was wasn't gonna jump in any more relationships. And then boom, that's when she came on the scene and uh, her brother was telling me about her and I was just like, Hey, I I just got in this relationship. I can't pursue it, but yeah. I would love to meet her. And so we went to this convention and she can kind of give her, I'm gonna let her do her half of it at the convention. And I just kind of fast forward at the end of the convention. Um, I don't know why, but I ended up, I, I just felt urged to to pick her up. So I just, she, cause she had these like, high heels on. Oh, so she had these high heels on. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She had, she had these high heels on and and she was like, man, my feet really hurt. And Theo and Rodney had went forward. And I was like, I, I'll walk with you. I had this really like cheesy looking like, suit jacket on. Anyway, so I, I picked her up. I carried her to the car. They made a couple of jokes or whatever. And then we had to talk. We talked via Facebook once or twice. And then that's what then led into um, our big encounter. Uh, that was a year after oh, I met her yeah. at the convention. And so then that didn't go the way I planned for it to go. Encounter. So she she ended up uh, <laughs> <laughs> she ended up coming to our bowl game. Uh, so after the season in college, you have a bowl game and we did it in Texas. It okay. was the Cotton Bowl. And it's kind of weird how we're here now in Texas. I'm sure we talking to you. Kind of weird how, <laughs> how we did it in Texas. Um, but it did everything. This guy just has a way of like orchestrating things perfectly. So, so anyway, so she comes because her best friends, her one of her best friends is my best friend, uh, Shelly Calhoun. And they were all close. Everybody was close. And we kind of knew that, but I didn't know she was coming. So then my, <laughs> my best friend Rodney told me, oh yeah, Stephanie's gonna be there. She's coming to the game to support Shalit. Again, she didn't know I was, you know, she didn't know we talked like once or twice on Facebook a year prior, but that was about it. So, so then I heard a story. This is a really long story. So then, <laughs> so then I heard a story um, from her, no, from Rodney. And they were having a discussion about me at home, maybe like two or three months prior to that. It was, it was two days. Oh, no, oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was two days, two days prior to that about me. And her mother had said, I'm going to, I guess they said, Rodney was talking about me. And they were like, yeah, he's such a great guy. He's an awesome dude. And then I guess her and her mom were talking. And then she was like, I'm just going to give you the Joel. You, you Joel can, uh, he can take you and, whatever, just jokingly. Yeah. So then I heard about it and that was my end oh, wow. to have a conversation with her, but I'm kind of aggressive. So when I meet her at the hotel, cause we're all in the same hotel, all you the case, my, you no cases, okay, no okay, cases. Okay, okay. So I, I met, <laughs> so I met at a hotel, <laughs> I met at the hotel, she was there, all her friends were there. And I went up there to go see her cause Rodney had what told me. And I had just kind of, I approached her way too, you know, like I just had too, much, I had too much testosterone and I approached her <laughs> pretty aggressive and just said like, you know, what was said about me? You know, that, 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 didn't, that didn't come off very, but again, I wasn't in a place, I was curious at this point, like, it, what, cause I keep hearing about her a whole year goes by and I keep hearing she's, she's so much like me and you know, you should pursue her or whatever. And at that point I was curious. so. I did have intent of trying to talk to her, but I just didn't do it right. I, you know, I was rusty. A year <laughs> off 
a year off of talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, How old were you? Man, I was that 20, 20? Okay. I was 20. He's real rough. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so then she she was like really mad and then she like stormed away and she, and she was like, it's whatever. She she's a she's a little aggressive too. So she spiced, I'm gonna just say that. And so she got real mad at me. So she ended up going back to the hotel room, telling all the friends. I ended up calling my friend. He was just like, you know, what did you say? What did you do? Did you, what did you, you messed it up, whatever. I was like, all right. So I felt bad the next day that I had to play the game the following day. I normally never talk to people the following day or if I'm playing in the game. But she she came to my mind, just really had to, I really had to, to say something to her, apologize. So I apologize and she'll probably tell you she was right about, she was about to block me right the day when I had done that, she was gonna block me. Um, and it just kind of all worked out. And then from there, we just clicked, came back home to Lansing, we clicked and uh, got married super early. And cause it was just like, everything was happening the way God- What does super early mean? Uh, we, we were dating for like two months and then boom, we're in it. Y'all engaged and married? We were, we were yeah, full marriage. Yeah. We were full oh, marriage. Snap. And, and it, a lot of it, a lot of it, I'll, have, I'll let her explain all the, the, the details. But we, when you know, you know. Yeah. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. But then I, I've, I've also learned to listen to, to God and listen yeah. to what, yeah. he, what he plants. And, and, and sometimes he'll do it in like really unusual ways where he'll, he'll send you like, confirmations through a date or confirmation oh, wow. through numbers mm -hmm. or you know just just like it was stuff that we were getting prophetically that so it was like one or two of those things you, you keep talking in code oh yeah yeah, yeah. wait you are you, are you are you are you are, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do it no i won't i'm gonna give okay. her i'm gonna let her do the detail part of this <laughs> i'm just giving the overview yeah yeah so um yeah now it's her turn okay so i'm gonna okay. tell the same story your version of Thor. Yeah, I'm All right, so I'll skip. I'll, skip, I'll go fast. Okay. Okay, so my brother said we should talk to Joel. I play basketball with Joel. Joel's big. Joel's cool. You don't really talk much, but, you know, I think you should talk to him, Christian guy, whatever. I'm like, okay, you know, I talked to him. His best friend was dating my best friend. So she kind of said, she's like, yeah, Joel's cool. Joel doesn't really. It's funny. Everybody said the same thing, but you don't really say much. But so, <laughs> and I met Joel, the night I met Joel, Joel literally said the whole car ride, hey, I'm Joel, Joel didn't talk again. The whole ride, we were, we were singing our gospel music, it was Jim, Joel didn't say nothing. So we got to the church, and this is fun. So we got to the church, and it was the Marvin Sapp, it was the Apex Convention, and Marvin Sapp was talking, and he had said, well, grab the hands of somebody next oh, to you. Snap. It was a good conference. He was like, pray for, pray with them for the service, that the service is going to be good. So it was me and my brother holding hands, and then Joe held hands with us. We were in a circle. And, okay, so I had just gotten out of, like, a four-year relationship with this guy. So, um, <laughs> like, I shouldn't have been. So, yeah, so I was in a four-year relationship, got out of that, and maybe I had met Joe two maybe months after kind of getting out of that. So still, like, in the heartbroken stage. Yeah. And so we're praying for service and we're like, you know, whatever we're saying, Lord, just bless the service. And I hear in my mind, and this is before I started going to guess this yeah. stuff, and I know what I'm hearing now, I, well, sometimes, yeah. most of the time I hope. <laughs> yeah. I know that's God, but I heard in my mind, I heard you pray for your husband. I just dismissed the thought. It came quickly and I dismissed it. And I was like, wow. What am, I, what am I thinking? Of? Wait, brother, brother. Wait, I know, I know, and I said that part. So, so the whole rest of the service goes on. I don't talk to Joe. Joe doesn't talk to me. And then when we're leaving, he starts talking to me about <laughs> you are rusty. He's like, yeah, you see these buildings? <laughs> we're just walking like, look at that building. Look at the way they, the architecture. <laughs> I'm like, what? You were, you were awkward. Too. I was awkward too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was awkward. I was awkward. I was awkward. I was like, Oh gosh, boy, are both wet, man. And I'm like, yeah, yeah the buildings are so nice. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, so I'm thinking, like, my feet are killing me. Yeah. So Joe says, well, I could just carry you. I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah. So Joe is so sweet. Joe picks me up. Joe makes sure our bodies don't touch. Joe is carrying me like this. <laughs> and he's wow. walking. And we get there. He, he can't talk, right? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're supposed to be stopping, Joe. You're a respect 
<laughs> they are officially running this interview. <laughs> okay, I, I will stop him from now on. No, you can chime. And he's scaring me. Get to the car. His best friend is like, which is like one of my brothers. He's like, put her down, man. What are you doing? And Joel just drops me down. I didn't want to get hit the ground. I have my shoes on. And he like, oh, she said that I could carry her to the car. I asked her if she wanted me to. She said, Aww. yeah. It was so sweet. So then for the rest of the night, y'all, we went to dinner. We went to a pizza restaurant. Whole group of us. Joe just said, what? Because we were both disinterested. We weren't. We were just not in that place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Joe didn't talk. So then it's like a year goes by. I release a song. Joe has a really great football game. You release a song? What does that mean? Yeah. Oh, I released a song that I had made up and Joe had wrote me on Facebook and he basically said, that song is so good. You released a song on Facebook? Yeah. It was okay. called She's Just a Girl. Okay. And Joe's commented to the song. Okay. So then Joe had like a crazy good game. So are, are you saying you have an album? No, it was literally one song. Okay. I can repost it. You know someone that released the song, you're like, you think of album release, you're thinking of, uh, it's just... Okay, good. That's cool. That's cool. It's just like... Just, I'm, just pulling, I'm just pulling it yeah, out. Yeah, it was just on like, uh, I think it was on a spot. Of, no, 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 it's not, no, 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 it's not. Okay. Yeah. That's great. I'll repost it now. Good, good, good. good. It's, it's not super good like that. I'm I mean, sure it's amazing. Oh, wow. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I think I did and like recorded it somebody's... Uh, yeah, yeah, we gotta, okay, we gotta make so... Some, yeah, you stopped. Okay. What you trying to say, Joe? You said you were trying to say. So, okay. So, Joe had a good game, and I had wrote him like this this script. I'm like, well, eyes haven't seen it, ears haven't heard it. All this stuff, and I'm like, you know, God's going to really bless you in your career. Like, as long as you keep doing good things. Joe didn't tell y'all. Oh, yeah, let me be back. Okay, so we're leaving the restaurant. Me and my brother are on our way home. We're in the car together. My brother's like, wait, wait you back? What happened to Facebook? Oh, okay. Scratch that. We're going to go back to the restaurant. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. The night we met. The pizza place. The pizza place. Okay. Yes. So y'all having this whole conversation. We're all like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're like, it's okay. It's, it's my job. Okay. So we back to the pizza place. Me and my brother, we drove together. My brother okay. drove us all. So we're riding home and my brother says, yeah, my brother's so cool. He's laid back. Hey, I got to tell you something. I think I heard something when me, you, and Joe was praying. And I'm like, oh my God, I think I heard something too. And he like, well, tell me what you heard. Because sometimes I think it'd be Jesus, but it just be me. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. So I'm like, well, let's say it on the count of three. <laughs> well, because we, I don't know if you <laughs> It's on the count of three. We're like, one, two, three. And I'm like, you pray for your husband. My brother's like, that's your husband. So we promised we would not tell anybody that. We was like, okay, you're not at VSC 7 if you don't like the fox, so you just flush it down. If it doesn't apply to you, flush. Well, that night I went home and I flushed it down. And so my brother, we said, we're never going to tell anybody. We weren't going to talk about it or anything. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I just. So then a the whole year passed. We talked twice on Facebook. So for everybody who wants to be in a relationship, guys, just slide Wait, in no, hands. you can't do that. You can keep talking home. No? Okay, that's well, just another call out. We're going to do the ministry. We're going to do all that. Okay, okay. So, okay, so you're past. And then we're going to the, the Cotton Bowl, which is in Dallas. And me and my friends, we drove from Michigan to, De to Texas for the game because my best friend's boyfriend, which is his best friend, played. So my mom, my mom never met Joe, doesn't know. All she knows is that Joe has a campus ministry. He lives in the same house as Rodney, which is the guy who we both know, a mutual brother of ours. And that's all she knows. And my mom is serious. She's like, I'm just gonna give you away to him. He could just have you. It just, I just feel that in my spirit. He wow. can have, I'm gonna have me some football playing, grandbabies. And yeah, when you go there, just tell him he can have you and I give you away. And I just sign. And I'm like, we don't even know, dude. Like, we don't know anything about <laughs> him. And your mom didn't know. What my mom didn't her. know. No, she didn't know anything. Okay. We, had, we didn't tell him. <laughs> okay, right, right. So Rodney was there. So he must have went back home because they lived in the same house at the time and then told Joe. So Joe walked walked up to me at oh, the place. Right. He said, he texted me and said, I'm like, how'd you get my number first? He was like, oh, Ronnie gave it to me or something. And then he texted me. He's like, can I talk to you in the hallway? Because like all the guys, all the football players and stuff, my friends were just hanging out. I'm like, sure, I come out there. And he's like, I mean, he's 6'6", six, six, 300 pounds, walking up on me. <laughs> I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, basically, like, what were y'all talking about me at your house? Like, I heard y'all were talking about me. Were you in front of other people when you said No, that? it was just me and okay, I was okay, sitting okay. out there. And I was like, 
who tells you that? And so I was getting, I got kind of, I got really mad. I'm just like, I felt, I don't know what word I use. Like interrogate, I think I said, yeah. well, you're interrogating me. So he walked away, I walked away, we didn't talk again. He takes me that night before I could block him, there's nothing but God. So I was like, what he approached me, block. So he texted me and said, God told me that I need to apologize to you before I go play this game. I need to tell you that I was sorry for how I approached you, how I talked to you. He was like, I was wrong. That's now my heart. I hope that you could forgive me. Wow. I hit him with the K. No. Just the K. You're a devil. <laughs> oh, but K. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was being really me. Yeah. I was being me. Yep. So then after that, we drove, we had a 22 basically hour drive mm -hmm. back to Michigan. And then we started texting after the game. And we literally never stopped texting after that. Oh, wow. And then. How did you get over the, your K? What happened? I, I, he oh, you. I don't really think I was really mad. I just was being petty. I mean, but he messaged back again. Or you, like, oh, yeah. And I was waiting for it. That's like, you know, you're playing games. Oh, yeah. Playing games. I was when I'm like, well, if Jesus yeah. told him to reach out to me, maybe God told him to shoot me or what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, hey. oh hey. no, wait, I think I take back. I was playing it. I take back and said, you had such a good game. He was flirting. Bad game. She shoot her shot. Bad. I shot my shot. And then we never stopped texting. And then we got to Lansing. We went on our first date, and then we were heading home from the super. Our first date. Yeah, we went on a group date because we were both awkward. Yeah. So our first date was to the movies with other people. We didn't even sit by each other. Oh, we, and then <laughs> they, yeah, it just wow. Then our second date, <laughs> we went to Japan. Y'all are straight out of the. <laughs> What's the guy that did the film, the Christian film? What's the name? The War Room guy. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. They are out of those movies, okay? We went to Panera, we did a Bible study. What y'all do? Yeah. Oh, before you went to Panera, like, what? Like, he was, Joel was pushing, he was like, you want to come study with me at Panera? I'm like, let me get cute and go to Panera. <laughs> he was like, yeah. And when I got there, he had his Bible laid out. He had his, uh, you know, the version that kind of breaks everything down to you. So he had the commentary, the Bible. Wow. I was, there. I was just, good thing. I was only going to bring my app on my phone. Thank God I brought a hard copy. <laughs> he had a notebook to take notes. Wow. I'm like, why well, was he going to take notes tomorrow? <laughs> so we were, leaving, <laughs> we were leaving this Superman versus Batman movie on our way home. And we we're in the car and Joe said, you want to just marry me? Oh, wow. I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. So how long have you ever dated? This, Oh, maybe two, three weeks. At okay. Three, at three weeks, it's like at the most. most. Okay. That's pushing it. You think so, Joe? I think so. And Joe said, maybe you should marry me. And I was like, no. And he said, well, I would just keep asking until you say, yeah. And then he asked me again, so you want to just marry me? I was like, sure, why not? That same day? No, this is okay. like the next, maybe it was the next double day. Joe okay. was persistent. <laughs> and then. So, so just, just to kind of chime in. Yeah, go ahead. I was. I've always been a hopeless romantic. Oh, he's so, so sweet. It was like, especially going like a whole year without being in a relationship. Because yeah. I have been in a relationship literally from the age like probably like 14, 15 up until that point. It, it was one relationship to the next one to the next one to the next one because I wanted to pursue marriage. The last yeah. one I was prior to that, yeah. I won't get into that. Anyway, so then it was just like, for me to have waited was a big thing. You know, yeah. I was, that was really God kind of, he trusted me at that point yeah. to have what I needed to sure. have. So once he started confirming those things, it was no question that it was time, you know. Wow. And so then why waste time? So why did you get a ring before you asked? Well, well it was just ready. a thought at that point. Oh, so it, just it kinda... wasn't, it <laughs> wasn't until I, cause I went and got the ring. You got the ring a little bit before the day you got married. Really? And you, yeah, you got a promise it. ring. Did I get a promise ring? I did. That's what you gave me at the, gave at the altar. You're right. At I the did. courthouse, I mean. So I didn't have you the ring. Right. Yeah. We only had $25. That's to get the marriage certificate. Really? We were even broke conscious. I think you said to me, my mom put some money in my account. I got enough for me to go get the marriage certificate. Aww. It was so sweet. We went and got the marriage certificate. 
And y'all, we didn't tell anybody that we were doing all of this. So we were telling them, like, you cannot be publishing this in the Chronicle. <laughs> so then... I'm like the only guy that... Probably not in the history of football. <laughs> but at Michigan State, oh, to even consider being married and still be a senior in college. The last year, they didn't even know what to do with me for, like, the games and stuff because they had never had an athlete on the well, team why? that was married. So, like, Stephanie, how do we get you to the games? How We need to give you money to come to the wow. games. And it was crazy. It was different. And literally – Okay, hold on. I'm going to have to move y'all along. But yeah, yeah, with the, y'all, y'all got married at the courthouse? We yep. did on my yeah. lunch break. I had 30 minutes. <laughs> I was there. Nobody knew. But his Nobody best knew. friend, we needed it's one other. Yeah, yeah. You don't have time. Yeah. Yeah. I walked from I worked downtown for the government. So I just walked to the workhouse. I had 30 minutes. He had to get to practice. We moved it along. And I walked back to work and I was married. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. It was crazy. But I see wedding picture. So after we told our parents. Oh <laughs> girl, it was crazy. You wanna go on this? No, nah, Joe. <laughs> Joe snitched. I was supposed, we were supposed to like not tell until like we got like. I wanted right. to tell. She didn't want to. Tell. I don't want to tell. Her. My mom was gonna kill me. Cool. My heart's still being bad just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Wow. Yep. This, so the next year we had a we had a real wedding. Okay. okay. Did y'all get a whooping? No, my dad said better to marry than to burn. So. Come on, daddy. My dad. What's your mama was like. My mom was like. Mom, his mom. Mom, was mom was bad. My mom was good. Oh. To hear that. And not me share that to her. Like, it just Yikes. happened. I heard it. It was how, long, how long were you talking about people? We were married, maybe about, it was on graduation day. Yeah. It's it, when I was graduating. How long ago? Uh, what was it? Oh, you didn't make it 30 days. What day? <laughs> you didn't make it 30 days. <laughs> wow. And it was the stuff, it was the stuff too. Because they had never met me. My parents, oh! have, my parents only met him yeah. once. It was listen, like, listen, listen. No, but we listen, heard listen. from God. Listen. All the European Jesus viewers, listen. Listen. Talk to the Lord. Yeah. yeah. And then talk to the Lord. Because it's hard. Y'all may not say talk to your parents. Now, you know, typically we're going to honor our mother and father. The yeah. kind of honor would probably be. <laughs> <laughs> but you may have a. We but skip if, 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 yeah, in my case, case, if it's in my case, it's <laughs> because. <laughs> It's just getting my okay, case. So it really is. We, we kind and of we had confirmations marriage. like the, the last day of our marriage license was uh, 416, which was my birthday, but 16 in the Bible symbolizes love. Like, it, I mean, it, we knew it was God. Joe had a whole list of what he wanted his wife to be like. Oh, just was checking it off because it's like you met everything on him. Like, it wasn't like, and we're still together, y'all. It worked. Four years later, and we still together and it's yeah, awesome yeah, a great time. i wouldn't do it any different it's it's so young and free to just go that's crazy yeah, yeah. so this is this this point it keeps coming to me ladies please don't inbox joel asking for his single friends please okay. though y'all don't, y'all don't. <laughs> <laughs> i'll be a funny thing wait for god <laughs> wait for jesus Okay. Okay. Anything else you want to share about that? No. Nope. Because now is in how many years? Four in April. Four April what? Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's my birthday too. So if you want to. So the marriage license ended on her birthday, but it wasn't planned that way. Yeah. And it we didn't have more to it anyway. This is a lot to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So okay. So tell everybody what is it that you guys are into now? So now you guys are. When did when did you get into the NFL first? Y'all got married, and then you're in college. Yeah, um, so that's my senior year. After that point, um, I went to pursue the NFL draft. So we got- That was what, 2016? 20, 20, 20, 2016. Okay. 2015, April 2015, when you had the combine. No, it was yeah. 2016, it was the next year. Oh yeah, you're right, we got married 15. I get it, because we got married so many times so quick. <laughs> so we so I ended up going into to January, February, March, and the draft was April uh what was the fifteenth, April like seventh or whatever. And so from that point, right after the draft, I chose the team that I chose. You want me to get into that? No. Okay. Um and then I shipped out to Houston and she came well actually no, you didn't come with me yet. 
I came by, I went by myself for like two, two months, two and a half months. And then I made the team, then she came down. I came before you made Yep, you did. I have faith. That's it. He's going to be on his roster. I'm shipping his car. Wow. Thank you. And then when was that? That, that was, was August yeah. 1st. 2016? 2016. 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Y'all been here now for three years. Mm-hmm. Right. So how was it? work in Michigan. It's different. It's different. I've been, uh, yeah. It's, it's I love high. the people. People are just amazing. Yeah. Southern yeah. hospitality. It's good. It's good down there. People, that's kind of different from the Midwest. Yeah. 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 No, from the so, okay, my part. Okay, my part. So, so, not yeah. so friendly, but, but Michigan's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's where you are, you know, too. Like, yeah. Oh, so we're going we're gonna to get into the Jesus in the marketplace uh, type of stuff with this topic. Um, and so, no, 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 this was good. It, it was important for them to get to know you guys in a way. Because, you know, a lot of people, when they see, oh, it's Joel, that they see, they don't have to talk about the NFL, we're going to talk about, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. But there's way more to you guys yeah. than just that you're a football player. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so my thing is, anytime I interview someone, it's like, it's not, you're not who, what you do, you're who God says that you are. Right. You know? And I felt like it's more important for them to get to know you guys and not just be like, oh, you know, yeah. because what if you decide you won't play no more? It's not your identity, you know, and I wanted people to kind of hear that, yes, he plays football, yes, she does what she does, and she sings, and we'll launch an album, of course, one day, you know, whenever, right, but that these are, this is who you guys are, and I yeah. wanted them to, to get to experience y'all in yeah. that way, that's why they yeah. stop you, because I'm like, this is who you guys are, and not, you know, yeah, I don't know that's just what we do, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah, so tell us a little bit about Jesus in the marketplace and what it is that, from your perspective first, you know, you love Jesus, he loves Jesus, y'all love Jesus together, uh, but you guys have influence and yeah. you guys have neighbors and all that stuff. Like when you think about, you got your relationship with God, you're continuously growing and trying to learn more about him, learn more about yourself and your calling. When you think about the fact that you guys have an audit, you guys have influence in a, mm-hmm. whatever level that that is, what is it for you because you love that, what is it in your heart that you're saying, I want to do this because? So for me, I honestly, like how I am at this moment right now, how I am at a business sim, that is me all the time. Yeah. So everybody that I meet, I'm super friendly, super excited. I feel like more than me telling you about Jesus, I show you Jesus because yeah. I feel like he just illuminates out of me. Yeah. You know, so this is me in the marketplace at the games. At the Lady Texas Bible Studies, I'm coming in, I'm hugging everybody. Hey, y'all, how you doing? You look cute. You know, like, this is just my personality. So I literally have learned, I've literally learned that no matter what, I'm going to be myself. Yeah. Like, and if you kind of reject it or sigh at it, that's totally fine, you know, but yeah. it's not going to change who I am. And I'm not going to allow being an NFL player's wife, you know, or because this is how the culture is to change who I am because God didn't make carbon copies. He made me how I am for a reason. Yeah. And if I decide not to be the Stephanie that I am, really then people don't get this, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So when you, okay, so when you say that, you know, because, um, you know, they have the basketball watch TV show or something like that. And I, I'm not necessarily against it by any means, yeah. you know, but there's a, there is a media, this is what it's like, this is what the culture is like, what everybody should be like, right? And it, that could just be TV, you know? Yeah. But here you are, um, like me. You know what I mean? Like, when you say to yourself, okay, I want to just be myself, like, how do you see that that is influencing people or encouraging people or helping people along their journey that may feel the pressure of being something else? Um, Because, you know, like, because he's in the NFL, there's a stigma of how you should be, what you should be doing, how what you should, you know, or whatever. (laughs) It doesn't mean that that's wrong. It just means there is an expectation of what you should be doing, and you're deciding, I'm going to be me. Yes. And I guarantee you it's having an effect on people that are like, yeah. oh, so how do you kind of make sure you're you and then try to help other people be themselves? Um, like or like in, as far as organization or just in general? Uh, in general or when you're around, you said the Lady Texas? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, um, I've noticed that people respond to real. Yeah. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. more than like, because, okay, you see those TV shows, you see those people and, you know, people are spending thousands or millions of dollars on, you know, a person, a watcher, yeah. whatever. 
And I feel like honestly, just kind of being myself and being around those people, they respond to me better because I haven't, it's one on three years and I haven't changed that. Yeah. Like they've seen, I'll be honest too, a lot of a lot of people in the NFL world are people who have a certain status, I feel like are very uh, leery of being around new people, talking to new mm-hmm. people, open up to new people. When I first got to the team and I rejoined, I thought, y'all came to Houston, I was like, I'm gonna make so many friends. Yeah. It's gonna be so exciting. And it was like, ah, wow. You know, like I need to fill you out first, you know, because I, I had someone tell me before, like it kind of, it can come off as fake being too, too nice and too friendly. And they have to observe me to see if this is really how I am or if this is just how I am oh, wow. kind of said it. So it, it, it has taken a while, I feel like to build a, <laughs> a rapport to be able to, you know, say something or to be able to kind of be a person that maybe they'll call or reach out to on social media yeah. and not just them, but other people. Yeah. Like I felt almost, I feel like I've had to, to prove myself yeah. and I, I don't feel bad about that. And right. I, I understand, right. You know, like I tell people too, like between the two of us, I'm, I can be a little bit more inviting, but my husband, which is a good thing, Joel is observing, observing. Yeah. Joel is going to fill you out which I, I need to be more like that, you know, a lot of the time. But so, yeah, it's just, they have to, because people, people, they've been hurt. People have taken advantage, you know, people yeah. see money. They don't see them. They see dollar signs. Oh, wow. And they yeah. just want them to be around because of what they have and what status and what it can bring them. So they have to fill you out to know that you're genuine, that you're real. And then they open, the sign just open up. Yeah. So how has that been once you got past, like, the walls and they can open up? How have you been able to like share your relationship with God with them? How, you know? Well, a lot of the girls on the team are um, believers too, and they go to the Lady Texas Bible study. But I will say, my second year here, I had a hard time, um, and the Lord really—it was my own thing. I'm, I'm used to being like them. Used to having friends. Yeah. I'm from a small town, and I have a lot of friends. It was different because I started to feel the rejection, and I would blame on everybody. Nobody wants to be around me. Nobody wants to be friends with me. And the Lord is like. We need to we need to look at you. You need to flip that around and look wow. at yourself. And, and I I dealt with that and I went through that spirit of feeling rejected. And yeah. and now it's like, y'all, I'm so serious. I, I I really believe like if if the level of being unoffendable is like at a ten, yeah, I gotta be like an eight point six. Yeah, you yeah. know, like yeah. like I don't get offended <laughs> if somebody doesn't speak to me or they don't say hi to me or don't it doesn't invite me to things. I don't get offended, have fun, you know, yeah. don't do that. So I have to learn too, like, I had to learn that I don't need a bunch of friends. Yeah. And I don't need, I don't need to be trying to force my way into different friendships, even if I'm in the same, you know, group or the yeah. same social staff. Maybe I'm not called to be friends, you know, right. with certain people, maybe it's called to be something else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I know you had mentioned, and we'll get to you in a second though, but you had mentioned about you guys are having Bible studies yeah. and that a lot of your neighbors have come. Like, yeah. first tell us, well, because first of all, you move into a neighborhood and nobody knows you, nope. right? It's just how it is, you know? Yeah. What did you guys do and why did you guys do what you did to then bring, begin to bring teammates and your yeah. neighbors? Like, why and what? Well, we were doing Bible studies together, and I seen them all at the end of the call this one time, and they're like, come talk to us. Come on, come on around, hug and hug. Hi, I'm Stephanie, you know, we live at 355, and I'm like, hey, we do a Bible study, me and Joe together. This is Nancy, if you give me a number, I'll invite you to start coming. And then, I mean, we've had as much as like 25 people wow. in our living room just talking about Jesus. Wow. It's so fun. Because first it was just you guys doing it. Yeah, just the two of us. Yeah. Because that neighborhood is so friendly, too, and it helps. You know, yeah. you just, everybody just kind of migrates in the summertime. But it's like our street, of, though. It is just our street. Because I know people who've been you know. there four years, they don't know the neighbor right next door to them. Wow. See, oh, we got the best street and the best neighbors. Like, we will hang out. Wow. Like, how you and your neighbors hang yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what's, like, what's, when you think about what you guys are doing, why? Like, I know why you guys are doing it, but I want to tell the people that are watching this. Why are you guys talking to your neighbors, inviting them in, and doing Bible study with them? Uh, the thing I realized is that we, we all need each other. Um, the, the, body, the body functions the best when we're together. And so I've, I've realized that when our neighbors come to our Bible studies, 
and they come and just, we can all just kind of pour, pour into one another. At the end of every Bible study, everyone feels amazing. We feel great. We feel like the Lord has, has touched our hearts and we feel ready. We usually do it on Tuesday or Wednesday. And we just feel like the, 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 the rest of the week is just going to be great. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, I think that's what makes it so special because there are some people who don't, don't always go to church often. You know, we don't, we don't get to go to church on Sundays either. So having that opportunity oh, yeah. to, to just like have those Bible studies is our refuel. And it's a lot of people's refuel as well. And when two or three are gathered, that's mm-hmm. where he's in the midst. <laughs> so it, you can feel that, you know, and yeah. you feel that every time we had a Bible study, the Lord honors it and he touches people's hearts mm-hmm. and people have drawn closer through those Bible studies. Yeah. So what are you doing? I, I saw a picture of you praying for your team in Michigan. What mm-hmm. are you doing with your team? team now yeah. um it's it's little conversations you yeah. know there, there's a lot of believers on the team so it's little conversations that we have and uh ways in which we can bring a culture change or we can bring certain um conversations that we haven't normally had um so I, it's the, the, as we all kind of get together um i've learned i've noticed that our relationships have built together with yeah. protection, which is really special yeah so of the people that you guys have been witnessing to, whether in your neighborhood or Lady Texans or on the football team, have you guys had a moment where you were, both or individually, where you've been talking to somebody, witnessing to somebody, and then there was some kind of break that you're like, oh. have you had internet yet? Yeah. All the time. Yeah. So tell us about one. You, Stephanie, and then you, Joel. It's so funny. Recently, I was, uh, okay, so I have a business kind of by Seth, and I was, my neighbor bought a wig. Wait, 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 say it again. Oh. I have a business called Crowns by Steph. Because my name means crown joy. And so my, my neighbor bought a wig for me and she asked me would I install it. So she came over to my house and I was doing her hair and she had been having some issues um at home. And the Lord and the Lord started to just drop in. It was words of knowledge. Yeah. And I'm like, so do you have this in your house? I'm like seeing like a kitchen with an island and I see like a dove on the island. She's like, I have an island and it's right in the middle. And I'm like, okay, and this is like a stair. And, and it just turned into like a whole encounter with wow. God and the Lord. Man, God is just so awesome. What happened? Oh, uh, so we talked, we prayed. Yeah. And I put her wig on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. But this happens so often. Yeah. yeah it it's so fun. I always told y'all, we always meet the best people in the world. Yeah. How many times have people just come up to me and just pour into us or said something or given us a word? You know, and it's just literally just set us free. Wow. Like. That's a lot of that is BS system being yeah. taught how to hear yeah. and this being bold enough to say what you hear. Yeah. Oh yeah. Crossing that chicken line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What so about you? What's that? What's that? The most recent? Yes. Um, and then you know, after he does that, I'm gonna um see if anybody has any words of knowledge or if you guys are hearing anything. But I will also ask you so I'll start thinking about it before he finishes. What's the craziest thing God has ever asked you to do besides get married? <laughs> Uh, you did it, and then what was the result? So that's going to happen after you answer that about a testimony of like witnessing somebody. So it gives her time to think of one. Okay. Mine's going to be short since I heard you. No, I had a, it was a conversation I was having in our Bible study with a young lady. Actually, we were, it was kind of a group discussion, and uh, she was dealing with a lot of anxiety. And it's like, it's that unusual amount of anxiety that brings about. Um, you just know how there's so much stress going on at your job and just mm-hmm. crazy stuff and you just don't know why you feel this way beyond work, you know, related yeah. stuff. And baby, cause it, was, it was so bad. She would forget how to get home. The same place she lived for 10 years. Wow. She'll be driving home. And be so, she would forget not know where she's at. Face would be shifting and moving and like, wow. It's crazy. It's a lot of stress, and I and I can relate to that because when I was a kid, I used to have not even a kid. I was I was maybe like twelve or thirteen. I would have these panic attacks that would literally put me on the floor, and I would I couldn't move, and I didn't even know why I was stressing. Like why, as a fourteen year old kid, you would be stressing? I don't know, but it it happens. You know, life happens or whatever. But um, I would hit the ground. I couldn't get up. You know, it'd be the middle of the night. And it would take so long, you know, you just couldn't even breathe, like you were being choked. And then I realized later on down the road that it was a spirit attached to that. And I had to, I had to ask the Lord to free me from it. Um, so then we began to pray about that very same thing. And you could just 
you could just feel the uplifting in the room um, on that subject. Yeah. So, so see for you guys out here, if you guys have something, um, in about two minutes, I'm going to check on you, check in on you guys. Uh, but Stephanie, what's the craziest thing that God has ever told you to do? You did it, and then what was the result? Okay, but this is like geared towards BSSM. Nope, not BSSM. It can't be BSSM. It, it's not about BSSM. It's about well, what's the craziest it's thing? It's something that I did, but I did it with That's BSSM. Fine. Oh, okay. So we went to um, CSSM last year, which is another school like this system. <laughs> and I got my first word of knowledge. And I, I heard the night before Michelle and Rachel. And Pastor Sally said, pray for words of knowledge. And I was like, oh my gosh. You know, she said, I'm going to call you up. You're going to do words of knowledge. And she didn't forget. She called us up. We had words of knowledge. And I got up there and I heard Rachel and Megan. And, and you know what they sure you want when you, when you don't course. get around. But it's still hard to step out. It sure is. Even, even though they're going to cheer. So I ended up saying it, and literally a guy stood up and he said, my name is so-and-so, I have two sisters, one sister's name is Megan, one sister's name is Rachel. Blew my mind. It blew my mind. I was, literally, I, like, I felt like I was underwater. Like, I could hear everybody like, whoa! And I was like, I was crying, I was like stuck, and Pastel was like, this has never happened to her before, so wow. she doesn't need, but then it's like, she was like, well, you have a word for them. It just started flowing. Wow. It was powerful. And then everybody had a word for them. Wow. And it was just so, it was crazy. It, it blew my mind. So how does that make you feel that God spoke to you on their behalf? This is so awesome. That's so surreal. surreal. I, I still can't believe it. Yeah. That, that was kind of real. Movie, right? Yes. Literally leaving, I felt like Sam was kind of like trying to play with my mind. I'm like, did that really happen? That didn't really happen. You know, I'm tripping. But then people have recorded it. So I have proof that it really happened. So I'm going to go back to the video. When he was trying to tell me it was a lie, I was watching like, no, I said that. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was crazy. Yeah, OK. So. Uh, I had it, and I lost it. Oh, that's uh, not too bad. Yeah, you talked to yeah. But while he's thinking, uh, for those of you guys that are out here that, you know, you don't have anything yet, anybody, if you do, just go ahead and just stand up right over there. Um, if you don't, it's okay. But if you have anything, I don't care if you heard the word apple, I don't care if you saw orange, I don't care if you started breathing heavy, whatever it is, just come stand over there. You got it? Yep, I got it. Um, coming to Houston, um, you know, when the Lord had told me that, when he got off the phone, I had a bunch of choices to make of where I, where, as to where I could go. And the, going coming to Houston wasn't the best option I could have chosen. Um, and I could have just relied on listening to, you know, my agent or whatever. I could have relied on listening to myself and that, you know, voice I heard in my head of who I was, but instead I listened to God and, and he worked everything out. It wasn't a spot here for him and he still came. Oh. His agent literally told him, there's not a spot for you on the team. And Joe was like, God told me to go to Houston. He was like, bro, it's not a spot for the team. Tell me to come. Joe came first year. Not only made the team as an undrafted free agent, which is very unheard of. Yeah. Undrafted free agents usually don't. If they make the team, they maybe make the practice squad. Yeah. They don't have typically, or most of the time, long careers. So <clears throat> made the team a spot. The, your, the Bible says your gift makes room for you wow. and brings you before, and it just made room for him for the team. That's crazy. Because you ain't just bring yourself. You brought me. And all our stuff in the car. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that, that's where now you are, I don't know how the NFL works, you were, you were undrafted free agent and then now you are? Uh, I'm a, I'm a restricted free agent. Yeah. What does that mean? That basically means I have restrictions on my contract from them, but I'm still them? from the Houston Texans, okay. but I'm still a free agent. But I'm still, they still have like a hold of me, part of me. Okay. So they paying you though? They paid me last year, so this year they would have to renegotiate a contract. Okay. To then pay me for this year. Okay. All right. So we, we, we declare that Great. you'll get beyond what you, what you think uh, what you've been asking for. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so before we, I know that Cindy had something uh, earlier. You were talking about um, how there was a um, that you were dealing with a spirit that had you on the ground. I felt like God said that. You that there's somebody here that's dealing with that. Uh, they may be live, they may be on the replay, or they may actually be in this room. Um, but I feel 
um, really strongly that somebody is dealing with that. And so God wants you to speak to it, like call it out, whatever it is, um, you know, and help them to not feel shame, not to be embarrassed about what's happening, and then walk them through something to help them. All right. I call out the spirit of anxiety. I command that spirit to be gone back to hell, where it belongs, where it never will return. Um, to be free from that and we replace that with peace um, peace and joy a lot of joy and uh, and it's done Amen. Amen. okay so do y'all have any are y'all getting any thing yeah. okay. I've been seeing since, since I got in here I've been seeing a fight wall it's been this like this fight and somebody's fighting a battle. And it's like, remember when, uh, and who was that in the Bible who was wrestling with the angel? Jacob. Jacob. You know how Jacob was like fighting this angel and it was right there and his blessing was right there. You know, and he kept fighting with it. And then it, because of the fight, he, he had gotten over that, that hurdle when he got what he wanted from it. Yeah. And it's that same fight. It's not a fight where he's fighting, you're fighting like the enemy. You're fighting um, Satan. You're just fighting. You're fighting the power that you need, and, and it's right there. And it's it's actually somebody in this room too. Yeah. Um, so I just want you to know. I can't identify who it is, but I want you to know. Whatever you're fighting, don't fight it. Uh, the fight's over. You basically what I'm saying. The fight's over. Is, is claim your reward. So how does that person claim that reward? If they're fighting, they don't understand what's going on. By just accepting him, accepting Jesus, accepting the call. Accepting the call, that's what it is. Wow. You gotta accept that. Good. Cindy, you wanna come over here? Look right here. <laughs> this is Cindy, buddy. <laughs> the beautiful. <laughs> They're doing such a great job. It's okay. They are. It's amazing. And I just want to encourage you. I mean, there's things that they're sharing that's happening even now. Like even when you spoke about the fear of rejection before, I felt like even as you spoke it, people were just getting set free from the fear of rejection. And I kept hearing the fear of the future, which is also connected to the fear of success. And I just want to let you know that nothing keeps you back from what God has in store for you. So we just command that spirit of fear of the future and fear to, of success to be broken off of your mind, your will, your emotions, your physical body, your spirit, your past, your present, and your future. Because God has all things in his hands and all things work together for good. That's his promise. And we speak life. We speak freedom. We speak blessing. Father God, we thank you for the future because you are in the future. And we call the future right now into that person's life and who's ever struggling with those fears right now in Jesus' name. We thank you that you are able, that nothing is impossible for you. With man, it is impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. No spirit can keep us down. Nothing can keep us back from all that you have in store. Father, we pray for freedom right now for every heart that's listening. Freedom from every fear that would try to keep them back from faith and believing you for every step that they take because you are a good, good father. And we thank you that nothing is impossible for our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. We're excited about the future. Ooh, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Listen, you love me. Me too. I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, like, woo. Woo. <laughs> like, woo. My you, and I'm like, like this. Woo. Hey, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna let the cut off. I was like, I'm gonna just tell them that. <laughs> Thank you. Yo, she said to anybody who's listening, I was like, I'm right here this <laughs> <laughs> I was like, stop holding on to me. I was like, Ooh. Uh, that was powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I was holding up with their life. 
<laughs> I was like, I'm gonna fall and my pants are gonna fall down. <laughs> this is a like a corporate thing for multiple people and it like it just kind of like complements what Cindy was saying perfectly but I saw a rocket ship taking off and uh afterwards it transitioned to like someone looking out in the view and it's almost like as this rocket ship was taking off they were like what am I gonna do what am I gonna do like frantic like I don't know what to do and I felt like God was saying that he's in control and that like he's put you in that situation and he's propelling you to those greater heights. So wow. just 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 trust in him and just know that like he puts you in that situation and he's faithful to complete it. That's good. So, amen. Amen. That's so good. but you are putting a lot of hard work and a lot of time and dedication into something and the Lord is saying that the reward will be well worth what you put in so the juice that you're going to get from all your hard work and your labor it is going to be well worth how hard it was for you to squeeze out all those oranges or lemons to get that little bit it's worth it be diligent that's good that's a few of us huh <laughs> yes. Anybody else? <laughs> oh, you got something else. No, mm, he do, probably. I think he does. I think so, too. Look at him. I think he, he did. Like <laughs> uh, turn that door move. 
You know what? The only way I got set free was through Jesus. He's yeah. the only one that set me free. I'm 37 years, accepted Jesus, and you know what? I'm never going back. It's, there's nothing, nothing in the world that gives you more joy and more peace and more love than him personally into your heart. So you know what? If you haven't accepted Jesus, tonight's your night. Yeah. And you know, like I said, don't try to figure it out in your head first. Just allow your heart just to be open. So I'm just going to pray for anybody that wants to accept Jesus in their heart. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you did on the cross for each and every one of us, Lord. If there was just one person left on the earth, you would have went to the cross for us. And we're just so thankful. We're so thankful for what you did for us. It's not what we could do for you, but it's what you did for us. And right now, Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would just forgive us for any of our sins, Lord, that we have committed against you. Anything that we have done that has dishonored you, Lord God, we just ask that you please forgive us. We want you to come into our heart and empower us with the baptism of your Holy Spirit to live a life of power. It's all about your power here on earth today. Nothing's impossible for you. We've seen signs and wonders and miracles and testimonies of everything that you have in store. And you know what, Lord? It's all because of you. So, Father, I pray that you would fill every heart that listens, Father God, with a, a fresh baptism of your Holy yeah. Spirit. We just surrender our lives to you, our hearts to you, and our wills to you. And, Father, we just say yes, yes, have your way. Come in and take over. You take the driver's seat, Lord. And, Father, we thank you for what you will do in each and every heart because tonight is a defining moment of turning back from the past and into the future and what you have in store for each and every listener. And, Father, we just thank you. Your blessing is upon every heart that has accepted Jesus tonight. And we thank you that we're promised eternity but even greater than that is even today. We could bring heaven to earth today. And Father, I pray that for each and every listener that they would step out and just take those risks and just share their love story. Because the way we gave our hearts to you is just our own love story. We get to share that with so many who need to hear that there is hope. And you are the only hope for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can you do the, um, the confession that you can make? Yes. Yes. So you could repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus. would you please forgive me would you please please for forgive everything me. that I have done and anything that I'm doing even this moment. I ask that you would come into my heart I ask that that you would come into and my take heart. over my life. I repent for any rebellion, any pride, any fears, any insecurities, any doubt and unbelief. I believe Jesus that you went to the cross for it all. So I thank you for forgiving me. So I thank you for forgiving me. And I ask that you come in my heart. My Lord, and be my and Lord. be my Savior, and, be my Savior. and fill me and fill with the power, with the power of the baptism of, the baptism of your Holy Spirit. Of your Holy Spirit. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, Amen. 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 Amen.
All right. So any any lasting thoughts or comments? I'm not going to uh, mention your camp uh, and then your new website before we go. New business. Maybe I should reach that. Okay. All right. Well, any lasting each of you? Uh, no. Thanks for listening to our story. Yes. Yeah. So. Happy to be able to talk with you all. Thank you, Kim, for having us. Yeah, this has been really fun. We're going to sadly go to Reading. Oh, throw a party. I'm so here. I'll go for it. Yeah, this is really fun. So, if you're listening, we are so thankful for um, your listening ears tonight. It was yeah. fun to be able to hang out and kick it with you. And it was nice for people to get to see us together and, yes. and not to just be only for football. This is their first interview together. Yeah. Yes. 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 I really wanted it to be about y'all and less about football. You know, because yeah. they get to do all that, you know. Right. It's like there's more, way more to y'all than football. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Any lasting thoughts, comments, those watching? Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, that's it. That's it. So thank you guys so much for being here. We'll be back next Sunday at 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. If you want to watch any of the previous episodes, you can go to YouTube, You, Me, and Jesus. We have tons and tons and tons of videos. We've been doing this for two years. And that's it. Oh, and uh, anything we share with you guys tonight, like one of the prophetic words or words of knowledge, or even if you accepted Jesus and you have questions or just want to say, hey, that was me, you were prophesying to, just send me an inbox message. We would love to talk to you. All right. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye. You guys are awesome. Blue. Thanks.